Okay, so here we are still in section C of the first paper and this is now looking at Lake District and tourism to look at the attractions for tourists, the social, economic and environmental impacts for tourists and then strategies to manage the impacts. So what makes people get there, the social, economic and environmental impacts and then how do they manage those impacts. Nice and straightforward. Okay, first of all a bit of background on the Lake District you can see from the map over here that the Lake District is up in the northwest of England, very, very close to the very large conurbations of Manchester and Liverpool, and the people from there can access via the M6 into this wilderness area, upland area, glaciated, lots of ribbon lakes you can see at this distance, some honey pots in terms of Helvellyn, Bofell, etc. Some big primary attractors, wilderness area, and then some deliberately managed honey pots. Just outside you've got Kendall, which is the gateway to the Lake District. Then within the Lake District itself, Windermere, Ambleside, Keswick are the major settlements. And then you've got the obvious, particularly well sought after places, the Peak of Helvellyn, and then the major lakes, uh, including Windermere, Coniston, uh, and Earlswater. So the attractors, when listed, are quite straightforward. They are the honeypots and wilderness, the lakes in particular, some names will be useful for your, for your exams, peaks, the peace and tranquility of a wilderness area, and the plants and animals, the plants and animals, flora and fauna. Then once people go, lots of people go for these things, then of course people take advantage of the, the uh, locations for boating, windsurfing, etc, uh, etc. Et Okay, oops, pardon. Finally, as I've mentioned, the places Ambleside, Keswick being two good examples. So what are the impacts of tourists? So again, your examiners love it. Social impacts, environmental impacts, economic impacts. One of the most important and significant issues here is to do with second home ownership. We're in a region where, because of the M6 in particular, many people who have got the money can afford to have a second home up in the Lake District. And of course, second homes are not good and not bad. They're very bad for the local people who find that they cannot compete for the house prices. A quarter of all homes in the area in Lake District National Park are in fact owned by people who don't live there. That means those people don't actually use the resources. They don't therefore need the public transport. They don't need the local schools. They don't shop every day. In fact, many of them, when they go for, say, weekends, will do all their shopping before they arrive in the Lake District, taking advantage of out-of-town supermarkets. This means that many of these services close, which, of course, makes it even less attractive for local people. And you get a negative multiplier effect. OK, economically, of course, you've got tourism. And the tourist jobs can provide a local and regional multiplier effect. So you've got a really good way of talking about how it's bad for the social aspect, but then in certain respects, it's good for the tourist economy. But of course, tourist, in, uh, uh, tourist industries are low skilled labor. It may be seasonal labor. Um, and by far and away, the negative house price rises uh, are probably outweighing the short term, low skilled, low, low paid tourist jobs. Environmentally, of course, all of these people come along and they're driving vehicles, so we've got car pollution in this thing called a, a villagios, otherwise known as a village if you could spell it correctly, Mr. Williams. Um, in addition, we call there's footpath erosion, and of course there's litter and natural disturbance to the wildlife. So we've got social impacts, economic impacts, and environmental impacts. Now the economic impacts, of course, will start to influence the local council, so you can begin to smell out political impacts as well. Okay, if we move on to the next slide, we can look at the management of the impacts. Remember that third thing, how do they manage it? Well, the national park, national parks, all have a national park authority in MPA, and they are one umbrella over which management of the Lake District happens. Then you've got private landlords, and in fact, one of the largest private landlords is in fact the National Trust. So the National Trust work with bottom-up conservation groups to do things like footpath maintenance, uh, dry stone walling, they may set aside conservation areas, they may make sure that they're managing the areas they can. In addition, the local council deliberately subsidises the local transport, not just for the local people, but also to try to dissuade people from using their cars. A good example here is the Langdale Rambler bus service. 
trying to get a whole park and ride idea for the Lake District, that people may drive to take advantage of the Lake District, but then will leave their cars in the honey spots, honey pots, sorry, and will take advantage of the local bus trips. In addition, they will try and restrict parking zones. And by restricting parking zones, they're trying to protect many areas. They may have to sacrifice honeypot areas and put larger car parks there. But the idea is they can deter, by restricting parking, other places that can remain wilderness. Uh, a good example of this is Elter Water, where, in fact, they've reduced the amount of car parking. Or they've made the price of car parking parking very high to try to get people to use the public transport. And then finally, but ultimately, sorry, raising awareness. Conservation issues with it are, are now well signposted for visitors so that people are, are aware that the wilderness that they've come to experience is fragile and they must do their part to try and keep it going. Then we've got little one-off things such as the 10 mile an hour speed limit, which has been recently imposed on Windermere. This has had a negative impact on some of those things like high speed boating and jet skiing. But it was decided that by doing this, they would actually put the tranquility of the wilderness ahead of specifically people who want to go boating very quickly. What what happens though, of course, if you really want to go and boat along the lakes really quickly, you just can't go to Windermere, you go to another lake. So they've been able to sort of nudge people to use other facilities and other lakes um, for those activities. And as I said before, the NPA governs the Lake District and it has to balance up the social, economic and environmental impacts that they need to attract industry, but they also are conscious that there's an environmental cost and a social cost to the Lake District. So how might this be examined? Here's a four marker that I found on the SAM. Suggest how tourism might put pressure on the physical environment. Not a particularly difficult question to answer. Four marks, it may be two levels. See how you go. Remember, you could always find this on YouTube, or you can do a search, F study, uh, F case study on Kahoot, because eventually there'll be a Kahoot to match each of these videos. Anyway, good luck with those exams, guys.